Push. Come on. Come on. Come on, push, baby, push. You got this. I see the head. You're almost there. You did it. You did it. You said if it was a girl, you wanted to name her Isabella. Yes. Isabella's her name. It's a good name. I don't know if I can give her up. Now that I see her, now that she's in my arms. I don't want to either, but we have to. We can barely take care of ourselves. I know. She needs a good home and we don't have that. I know. Just hold her for a little while. It's gonna be okay. Isabella.
mess. Isabella, don't forget you have a doctor's appointment after school. I'll meet you there. Izzy, doctor's appointment after school. Meet you there. Got it. Good morning to those of you on the road. Today's weather forecast is looking like heavy rain all day long. Hey young lady, may I have a word with you? Did you say something? Yes, please come here. Young lady, let me introduce myself. I'm Julius Jones, and I pastor this church. And I've often wondered who owned that cool looking car. That'd be me. If it's a problem, I can move it. No, it's not a problem. By the way, what's your name? Izzy. Izzy? Izzy? You can park it there any time you want to, and maybe even on Sunday. Uh, thanks, but I don't do church. Oh, you're not a churchy person. It's just not my thing. Okay, I understand that, but listen, I'm going to be praying for you, and maybe one day you'll change your mind. Uh, thanks. Cool look, don't you think? If you're into that sort of thing, but I'm not. Well, what are you into then? What am I into? I'm, I'm into you. Hey, I was thinking that maybe we could go hang out at your place later. You know, maybe enjoy some of the wonders of nature. Not gonna happen. I can't believe you're still too ashamed of me to take me home. I'm not ashamed of you. I'm ashamed of my parents. There's nothing wrong with having poor white trash as parents. Anyway, I can't. I have a doctor's appointment after school. Is something wrong? Taking a physical for a life insurance policy my stupid parents are taking out on me. Life insurance? Why? Uh, did I say life insurance? I mean health insurance. Oh. Uh, stupid governments making everybody buy health insurance. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Well, maybe we can hang out in the morning. No, I can't. I, um, I got my road crew job to go to. Bummer. Yeah. Well, I'll catch you later. Okay. That was the most invasive physical I've ever had. It's over with. Get over it. We've really got to fix this here. What's this? It's for Mini Salon and Boutique. I want you to get your hair fixed for your father's charity recognition banquet tomorrow morning. Tell her you're my daughter and you won't have to worry about an appointment. After that, I want you to buy a nice formal dress to wear. Is that it? That's it. Maybe it's time I do need a makeover. Got some of Isabella's blood test results emailed to me. That was quick. Give what you pay for. What's the verdict? Well, there's bad news, and then there's worse. Which would you like to hear first? Give me the bad news. As we suspected, She's using drugs. 
Anything alarming? Marijuana. And I bet that's why she's the way she is. Well, I think it's that public school that we allow her to go to. Oh, that too. We never should have given in to her on that. Now for the worst news, the blood test results also. What in the world are you wearing? It's my new dress, you like? That is not formal attire. You realize we're going to a banquet honoring your father this morning? I know, that's why I'm all dressed up. We will not be seen in public with you dressed like that. Well then I guess I'm not going. And for whatever it's worth, Daddy, Congratulations for donating enough money to that charity in order to be revered by all. And for whatever it's worth, thank you for your sarcastic attempt at being human. Not so fast, young lady. We got your blood test results back. And? And a couple of things. We know you're using drugs. Like mother, like daughter. This is not about me. This is about you. Your father and I think that public school you're going to is having a bad influence That's on you. That's the only sane thing about me. My psychiatrist says... Oh, don't go talking to your shrink about me. You're the reason I go. I have better things to do today than have you drag me down. Isabella, do not walk away from me when I'm talking to you. Just let her go. <sighs> what are we going to do with that girl? It's just a phase. She'll grow out of it. We'll take her car away from her. A phase? More like bad DNA. You're the one that wanted to adopt. I was perfectly content spending the rest of my life with my trophy wife. But you wanted to adopt, so we did. What are you doing here? And where did you get that car? And when did you go over to the dark side? Oh, I just did it to make my mom mad. Look, we need to talk. I can't leave. Don't be a loser. Izzy, I have to be honest with you. I, I, I don't have a job. I'm here doing community service as part of a plea deal that I struck with the DA. And if I get into a stolen car, I'm, I'm going to prison. Well, now it's my turn to be honest with you. I'm not poor. I'm filthy rich and that's my car. Sweet. Come on. Be anything else, Sean? No, we're okay. good. All righty then, you can pay at the front. Thank you. I can't believe you lied to me. What does it matter if I'm rich or not? I loved you when you were poor. And now? I love you even more. Hey, that rhymed. I'm a poet. No, you're a poser. You're like the poser poster child. Come on. From emo to goth and poor to rich, overnight. Whatever. I'll tell you what I know. As soon as I turn 18, I'm walking away from my family and their money. You're insane. What I wouldn't do to be from a rich family and have access to money. Well, it's not my money. And they're not even my real family. I can't believe they lied to me all these years. I've decided I'm going to find my real parents. How? I don't know. Hire a private investigator or something? My uncle's a PI here in town. Maybe he could help. You think he would? I mean, not for free, but you got money, right? Yeah, we established that. I'll call him when I get home. Thank you. Rex? Lizzie? Did you find them? Took some digging, but I did. Your daddy's dead. Died about 10 years ago in a car accident. Your mother, she's still alive and well. Where is she? She lives just south of Austin. Took the privilege of setting up the meeting with you. What's this? It's her address. She's gonna meet you at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning in Austin. Now it's your turn. Oh yeah. Nice doing business with you. Hope everything works out well for you. 
say hi to Grayson and tell him thank you for the business. I will, thank you. Hey, how'd it go? I'm meeting my mother tomorrow. Can you believe it? I guess I'll take a bus or something. I told you he was good. But a, a bus, why not drive? Parents grounded me for my car. I'm supposed to meet her in Austin. I'm going with you. You don't have to do that. Of course I do. You're my girl. Besides, what if she turns out to be some psycho killer? You'll need me. Just my luck. I have so many questions for her. I wonder what she looks like and what her name is. I forgot to ask the PI what her name is. Her name is Mom. I'll book the tickets. Hey, you in a hurry, dude? Yeah, I'm in a hurry, dude. Well, I'll save her a seat. That was rude. Hope I don't have to sit by that guy. Could have been my girl. I would have caved his head in. Here, let me help you. Thank you. Ticket, please. Thank you. Seat's right behind me. Ticket, please. Thank you. Thank you. Ticket, please. Oh, ticket! I got one. I got one. Thank you. Thanks for coming with me. This is a big deal. Besides, I want to see you happy for it. Be happy for a change? Is that what you were going to say? Yeah. I want that too. You plan on playing that the whole ride? What is your problem, man? My problem is, last time I checked, this was a bus ticket, not a concert ticket. <sighs> you can't play your guitar on the bus, ma'am. Okay. I do not like that guy. What did you tell your parents? I didn't tell them anything. What if they discover you're missing? They won't even notice I'm gone. Thank you for riding Waco bus lines. We are on our way. Attention passengers, please turn off and stow away all electronic devices. That includes cell phones, computers, and gaming systems. Come on, man. What gives? This is a bus, not an airplane. People, listen, just respect authority, all right? If the man says to turn off electronic devices, just turn off your electronic devices. It's that simple.
about Wake It Off was a straight shot down I-35. Yeah, that's because it is. Hey, driver. Driver. This isn't the right way to Austin. Don't question authority, man. The driver knows his job. Show him some respect. <laughs> yeah, I got your respect right here, pal. Attention passengers, I-35 is shut down outside of Belton due to a major tractor trailer collision. We are taking a detour. Come on. You're not seriously thinking about moving in with your birth mom. She'll have me. If she didn't want you then, what makes you think she'll want you now? Because from the minute I learned about her eight days ago, I haven't been able to stop thinking about her. I'm sure she's been thinking about me for the past 16 years. Okay, now what? Attention passengers, you're being bus jacked. As my associate in the back comes by, you'll put your wallets, cell phones, and all electronic devices to the bag. If anyone tries anything funny, one of you will die like so. Bang, bang. Now I've got good news and I've got bad news. For most of you, this is your final destination. But for seven lucky passengers, you should start preparing to meet your maker. Put the bag in the seat. Put your gun out. Oh yeah, I go. Right. Put your gun next to the driver's head. Okay. Now listen very carefully. If I point to you and say go, you'll get up, leave all your stuff behind, exit the bus, and assume the preposition next to the bus. If you try to run or escape, we will kill the driver. If I point to you and say stay, you will remain seated. Why are you doing this? We haven't done anything. Ma'am, if you have a question, please raise your hand. <laughs> are there any more questions? Good. Let's get started. Open the door. You, go. Don't forget to assume the prayer position near the yes, bus. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nasty little wound you got there. Go. You're the guy that complained about having to turn off his cell phone. I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know what was happening. <laughs> didn't understand what was happening? Or maybe you're the kind of guy that doesn't like being told what to do. That's it, isn't it? You're the kind of guy that complains about everything. What's your name? Larry, Larry Porter. Larry, Larry Porter or just Larry Porter? Just Larry Porter. What do you do for a living, just Larry Porter? I'm a pianist and a music teacher. Pianist? You know, I've always wanted to learn to play the piano. I just never took the time to do it. You know, some of the greatest musicians ever had disabilities, handicaps. Beethoven was deaf, Ray Charles blind. You get the picture, right? Right? So I want to help you become a better musician. I want you to take your finger, that little pinky finger, and bite it off. You can't be serious. Well, trust me, it's going to make you a better musician. Imagine having to work harder at your passion because that little pinky finger that you've always depended on isn't there anymore. Please. Please. Okay, I'm gonna count to three. One, two... Okay, three. okay! I don't got all day here, just Larry. That's it. Bite it, bite it. Come on, Larry, you can do it. That's it. That's it, just chomp down on it real hard like. <laughs> okay, well, stop, stop. I'm just kidding, Larry. You don't got to bite your finger off. I'm just, I'm just joshing with you, okay? But you know what? I'm impressed. I think you're going to do it. You stay. I think we can have some more fun together, you and I. Well, Mr. Respect Authority, just so you know, I'm the authority on this bus. Wouldn't be much of authority without that gun. Is that right? Hmm. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up.
But here I am. No gun. Don't worry about it, Carl. He'll do what he's told. Hey, Carl! Yeah. If this guy subdues me, I want you to let everyone go on this bus. Okay? Okay. But what are you waiting on? Here I am. Do something. Do something. All these people's lives are in your hands. You want to be a hero? Here's your chance. Do something. Who's in charge? You are. Louder. You are. Go. Hey, sweetie. You scared? You should be. Go. And you are? Manuel Perez. Manuel Perez. You a legal Manny? No. Well, what do you do for a living? I used to be construction. Till I got laid off. I got a job interview tomorrow in San Antonio. A job interview? Well, I tell you what, you be a good boy, don't cause me any problems, and you may just make it to that job interview. In the meantime, stunts you. Go. Hit the road, Jack. Ma'am, don't forget to assume the prayer position on the side of the road. Hi. What type of dress style do you call that? Emo. Elmo? Like the puppet? Elmo's a Muppet, not a puppet. And I said emo. There's a big difference. Nobody likes a smart aleck, Elmo. Is this your girlfriend here? Yes. What's your name, sweetie? Izzy. Izzy. Is he really your boyfriend? <laughs> Well, I thought it was funny anyway. Don't worry, Izzy. You get to stay and comfort your pathetic loser boyfriend here. You two off the bus. So, I said I was keeping seven, so that means one of you gets to go and one of you stays. The question is, who? Well, looky here. Somebody's finally taken my advice. Your prayer has been answered. What's your name? Mary Banks. Mary Banks. Well, Mary, you get to stay and you get to go. What a gracious God you have, Mary Banks. Attention, lucky passengers. You may be wondering why you were selected. Well, for most of you, it's because life dealt you a bad hand. Otherwise, you wouldn't be riding a bus. But for one of you, it's because you're a valuable commodity, worth trading for. However, the rest of you are expendable. Carl here is gonna hand out some hoods. You will each take one, put it over your head. Pass out the hoods, Carl. Okay. You will also need to remove your socks and shoes. Please do that now. Take a seat and grab a hood. think this guy's my friend? I only met him yesterday, and he's been pretty useless so far. And if you kill him, you know what that means. It just means my slice of the pie goes up. But it will make my job harder. 
And so, if you make my job harder, you probably won't make it to your job tomorrow. But you gotta hurry, Manny. I'm on a time schedule here. We'll kill him! Okay, I'll do it for you. One, two... Oh, give me the knife. Give me the knife. Go up to the front. Nice knife. All right, for that little mishap, you're gonna have to punish yourself. So punch yourself in the face for me. That's not a punch. Harder. Harder. Not bad, but I was thinking more like this. Better. Carl, put a hood on Manny. Attention passengers, we have arrived at your final destination. Please remain seated as we remove your items from the bus. Please refrain from removing your hoods at this time. You will not be allowed to exit the bus at any time. Any attempt to exit the bus will result in the immediate execution of the attempted escapee. If for some reason one of you do escape, this mission will be aborted and the remaining passengers will be executed. Do not attempt to hotwire this bus as it is equipped with an explosive device. We are watching and monitoring everything that goes on inside of this bus. So don't try anything stupid. We're hopeful your stay will not be extensive, but it all depends on how quickly our demands are met. In any case, your stay will not extend beyond the 4 o'clock deadline. In 15 minutes, you will be able to remove your hoods and move about the cabin. Thank you for traveling with us today. Which one is it? The black one. You're supposed to separate it, you moron. I'm new at this. Cut me some slack. Were you really going to shoot me back there, Jake? If I had to, but likely it didn't come to that. So we're really not friends after all? Just business partners, Carl. After today, I'll never see you again, so don't go get into a test, all right? Well, help me find the phone. Search for clues here. Got the phone, boss. I 
I get a do-over on that. There was an outside distraction. <clears throat> that outside distraction was your phone. That outside distraction was my daughter. <laughs> if only you got do-overs on your investments. Very funny. Has it been 15 minutes yet? Close enough. What are you looking for? My guitar. They took everything. Who, who ever heard of someone hijacking a bus? Don't they know the reason we're riding a bus is because we're all too poor to fly? Well, obviously somebody here is worth something to somebody. But I wouldn't worry. Once the authorities realize our bus is missing, they'll use the bus GPS and track us down. It's just a matter of time. Sorry, folks. This bus ain't got no GPS. What are you talking about? I thought every bus had tracking. I guess you thought wrong. That's great. That's great. Wow. We really hit the lottery this time. You find some trucks? Better than that, look. Hawaiian clothes. Have at it, my friend. You can keep all the clothes you like. Are you for real? I really mean it, Carl. Wow, I'm in heaven. You win again. I have a knack for that, don't I? <sighs> Least in racquetball. Well, you know, my investments will bounce back when the economy turns around. <laughs> wow. Why? Isabella's called nine times. I guess I shouldn't have put it on silent. Give me a moment, will you? Izzy's phone. Who is this? Izzy's kidnapper. Seriously, let me speak to my daughter. I'm serious. If you want to see Izzy again, alive, you're going to need to make a deposit. You let Isabella know that this little attempt at attention grabbing is not funny at all. Do you even know where your daughter is today? Well, she's, um, she's... What a pathetic father you are. Well, it's time you stepped up, Daddy, and today's your lucky day, because I'm going to give you that opportunity. Let me speak to Isabella. You'll get to talk to your daughter. But first, we're going to text you a bank account number, and you're going to deposit $2 million in that account. And you're going to do it in one hour. And one more thing. Do not get the FBI involved, or you'll never see your daughter again alive. We're watching you. Hey, hey, here they come. Move over, Elmo. It's your daddy. He doesn't believe you've been kidnapped. No funny business. Daddy? Isabella, tell me this is an awful prank you're trying to pull on me. I wish it was. What do they want? They want two million dollars. Two million dollars? Don't give it to them. I'm not worth it. It looks like we're in a barn somewhere. Hey! Hey! Sit down, young man. I said no funny business. I didn't think that was funny. Did you hear that, Daddy? That was the sound of the back of my hand across your daughter's face. Please! Don't hurt her. I'll get your money. Just, just give me time. You got one hour. Now, while your daughter may not think she's worth two million dollars, she's worth that to us. Now, these other hostages are expendable. If you don't pay up, one of them dies. I'll leave you all with a simple homework assignment. You all need to collectively decide who dies first if daddy doesn't make the deposit. And can't be Izzy. 
Oh, come on, don't look so grim. It'd be fun. It'd be like playing God. Someone has Izzy, and they said they want me to send $2 million within the hour, or they kill a hostage. There's the account number. Oh, we've got to get a hold of the FBI. No, they said that they would kill her if I involved the FBI. Yeah, I can handle this. That's what they're trained to do. They can make it so that the kidnappers won't even no. know. No, they said they're watching us. They've got cameras all through my house. I can't take that chance. What are you going to do then? We both know you don't have two million dollars to send. Izzy, for all our sakes, tell your dad to pay the two million dollars. He just took out a life insurance policy on me. I may be worth more than that to him dead. Oh boy, this is not looking good for us. Can you believe that? Her daddy set her up. Classic. Your dad wouldn't do that. You don't even know him. I don't even really know him. Where's as good as dead? You know what? We better start figuring out who dies first. I say we do it based on citizenship. If you're not an American citizen, then you get it first. I say we do it based on age. Older people first. Y'all have had y'all's chance to experience life longer than me. I'm not playing their stupid game. But last time I checked, you did allow your bus to get jacked. You had a chance to save us all but you failed. You know what? I will play their game. I say you die first. I, I second that. What? Stop it. We're doing exactly what they want us to do. We're turning on each other. Like Jerome said, I suggest we don't play their evil game. You know what, play their stupid game or not, it doesn't matter. If that punk kid's daddy doesn't pay up, then somebody's gonna die. So I suggest we figure out real fast who's gonna die first. Be all right. No, Hank's right. We have to call the FBI. Do you want to take that chance? We have to assume they can see and hear everything we're doing. It's, it's a bluff, Buford. How would they get the cameras and mics in here without you knowing? Have you had any service calls on the house lately or anything? We had the entire security system updated two weeks ago. There were two guys going all throughout the house. All right. Well, I can check on that. What was the name of the security company? No, they... I'm not going to take that chance. And what are you going to do whenever you can't make that $2 million payment? They said they were going to start killing people. Well, I'm going to send them everything I have in savings right now. Maybe that'll buy some time, and then I can liquidate some assets. Want me to make you a sandwich, boss? Not hungry. How do I look, Jake? Like a fat James Bond. Here, made you a sandwich. Oh, man. I'm starving. What? I don't like crust. I'm sure your underwear would disagree. You made a deposit. We got the money? He only sent 300,000. It's them. Put it on speaker. Hello? It's not what I asked for, Mr. Pennington. That's all I have in my bank account right now. $300,000 is not much for a rich man like you. You can do much better. I'm not as rich as someone's led you to believe. And I I'm definitely not as liquid as you think. You're just gonna have to give me more time. In a buyer one hour. But because you can't come up with the full amount, a hostage will die. No, please, you don't have to do that. I'm working as fast as I can. You need to work more with a sense of urgency. Let me speak with our daughter, please. Hold the line. Give me 
in one minute. It's Daddy again. I think he wants to say goodbye. Daddy? Isabella, I want you to know that I'm doing my best to meet their demands. It's just that the- Stop. I need to know something. Is this for real or are you trying to pull some elaborate life insurance scam by having me killed? What? No, no. What would make you think that? You told mom you were perfectly content to just spend the rest of your life with her. And mom said I came from bad DNA just like my birth parents. You know you're adopted? Yes, I know I'm adopted. That's why I'm on this stupid bus. To go meet my birth mother. Thanks for keeping that a secret from me. Isabella, I know I've not been the perfect mother, but I'm ready to try. And I'm ready to try to be the perfect grandmother. The blood test results showed that you're pregnant. What did you just say? Time's up. Wait! Are you listening, Daddy? Listen real close. Did y'all decide who's gonna die first? Oh, come on, it's not that difficult. Whose life do you think is worth less than the rest of you? I think the illegal aliens is worth less. He should go first. I'm not illegal. If they don't kill you, I will. I'll go first. Finally, somebody willing to make the tough decision. But that's not how the game works, Mary Banks. My life is worth less. Take mine first. Yeah. Yeah, she should go first. No objections here. It's for me. I think I'm going to go with Trace. What? With your first choice of Manuel Perez. Why me? Because he seems to be the only one playing the game right. He chose you. You're up. Let's go. I don't want to die. Look, man. I, I got a family. Manuel. We can do this here painfully slow or out there very quickly. It's your choice. Death is not the end, Manuel. It's only the beginning for those that know Christ. And it's not too late if you haven't already made that decision. <laughs> How touching, Mary Banks. I guess you want to pass around the offering plate now, huh? Hey, I'm on a schedule here. Let's go. Now. Did you hear that, Daddy? Manuel doesn't want to die. Start deciding who's next. Come on, man. You don't have to do this. Goodbye, Manny. They killed him. The clock is ticking, Mr. Pennington. They shot him. They shot him. I can't believe this is happening. Okay. Okay, we gotta think this through for a second. We gotta think who's gonna go next. She should go next. The Bible woman should go next. You, you, you got a sick mind. No, no. No, she said she wanted to go. She, she said she wanted to go. Tell them that you wanna go. She Just shut so. up. I'm tired of hearing the sound of your voice. I'm not supposed to be here, okay? I didn't sign up for this. Nobody wants to be here, so just shut up. You okay? Don't you dare sit next to me. What? What did I do? You've done enough. Rob, you've been hounding me to sell you this property for years. And now I'm offering it to you at a heck of a deal. I'm in a bad situation here, Rob. You're not gonna get a better off a deal from me in the future.
Hank. We both know Buford's in way over his head on this one. There's no way he's going to be able to come up two million. I know. I'm going to call the FBI. I think you should. Tell them this place might be bugged. Tell them to come in soft. It's the right thing to do, right? Of course it is. Thank you, thank you. I just sold the beach house in Florida to Rob for 250, and I'm waiting on a call from our stockbroker. Make the call before it's too late. You're really having fun with this old dress-up thing, aren't you? Man, I'm having a blast. Went from James Bond to Farmer Bob. <laughs> How did you get hooked up with Rex, anyway? Carl Bass is at my club. We go way back. Well, Daddy just made a note of deposit, but again, it's just way short of the mark. I don't think he's getting the message. You know what to do. Let's go, Farmer Bob. Hey, hey, here they come. Look, I, I said the guy with the beard goes next. My name's Larry, and nobody cares what you think. I said we vote you off. I agree. Guys, I have a daughter. I have two daughters. <sighs> Guess what, folks? Daddy failed to fully meet our demands once again. So, you know what that means. Who's it gonna be? You? You? We aren't gonna play your game. It was such a fun game. Okay, have it your way. Let's go, just Larry. Me? Why me? Well, kill you now, kill him later, kill him now, kill you later. It doesn't really matter in the end, now does it? Let's go. It's okay, Larry. It'll all be over before you know it. Hey, Mary! No words of encouragement for old Larry here like you did with Manuel? No go with God speech? I believe Larry has already made his peace with the Lord. That is, if the cross ring on his finger is more than just a fashion statement. Huh. I never noticed that. Good eye, Mary. So, you're a Jesus freak too, eh? I am. Good for you, Larry. It's time to go meet him. Let's go. Here we come, Jesus. Here we come. I take it you received the money? We received the money, but again you're short. Listen close, Mr. Pennington. Get on your knees. Get on your knees. You listening? Tell us your name. Larry Porter. Any last words, Larry Porter? Lord, forgive me of my sins. Uh, if he's listening, ask him to forgive me too. He can. He will. Shut up, I was just kidding. Please, stop killing people. I'm trying my best. I still don't want you near me. What did I do? Come on, talk to me. You knocked me up, that's what you did. You're, you're pregnant? You, you said I wouldn't get pregnant our very first time. You lied to me. My parents lied to me my whole life. Why does everyone around me keep lying to me? There, there. You're just going through a really rough patch. But things will get better. That's rich. They certainly can't get any worse, now can they? How do you know? The storms of life, they come and they go. When you're right in the middle of the storm, it's hard to see the clear skies ahead. But they always come. The question is, when you're in the storm, in whom do you seek refuge? What do you mean? Well, how do you handle the storm? Who do you turn to for help? I turn to my music. That helps. Does it comfort your soul? 
does it care for you and, and work things out in your best interest? Well, what do you turn to? I turn to the only one that can help. Jesus. I, I see where this conversation is going. Look, I'm not really into religion. Oh, me either. No, when I talk about Jesus, I'm talking about a relationship, not a religion. It's all bullcrap. Seriously. I mean, there's so many different religions in the world, and every single one of them believes that their God is the right one. I mean, there's Hindus, there's Muslims, there's Buddhists, Mormons. What makes Jesus any different? Well, my God sacrificed his only begotten son so that man could have forgiveness for their sins. Other religions, they offer different ways to get to heaven, but none where God sacrifices his life for humans. Can you think of another God that did that? No, I'm, I'm with Izzy. I don't, I don't buy it. <laughs> well, it's not for sale. Salvation is a free gift. It can either be accepted or rejected. Would you please shut up about this God thing? If you really cared about us, we wouldn't be in this mess in the first place. God never says we won't go through trials. But it's when we do that we find our faith and we put our trust in Him no matter what. I said shut up. You shut up. She has the right to believe what she wants. And I want to know more about Jesus myself. Well, by the looks of it, we're all going to get to meet Jesus real soon now. He even exists. Why did you offer to die first? Well, this earth is not my home. And if my death gives someone else a chance to accept Jesus, then I'm ready whenever God's ready. You know what? Bingo. Because you are definitely not from this planet, lady. Like, you are way out there. Look, just because I'm dressed all gothic doesn't mean I'm a devil worshiper. I'm agnostic. Agnostic, I see. So you don't believe in God, but you don't discount that he might exist. You just need more proof. That about sums it up. What I need from God is for him to talk to me in some form or fashion. I've tried talking to him, it's just he doesn't really talk back. He's worse than my dad and that's pretty bad. You know when that hijacker was picking and choosing who would stay and who would go and I was praying? Yeah, I guess he didn't really answer your prayer. You guessed wrong, he did. I was praying that he would pick me to stay. Okay, no, that's weird. Why? Well, I was praying that for you. I don't understand. I didn't know what these men's intentions were, but I for sure didn't want you to be the only woman left on the bus. But you don't even know me. Why would you do that for me? I gotta use the bathroom. I'm just doing what I feel God leading me to do, even if it's just to go through this with you. Well, thank you. I don't think I believe in Jesus, but I do believe you're a good person. that? What's a dead guy doing in the john? Huh. Uh, apparently the bullet went through that lady's hand and into this poor fella's head. Come on, man. What are you doing? Put him back. He wasn't with us whenever they collected phones. Maybe he still has one on him. Charles Foster, he's from Waco. Sorry, Charlie, you never know when it's your time. Just our luck, the only person on earth that doesn't have a cell phone. Grab a suite for me. Where are we taking him? to the handicap spot up front. Uh, unless you want him back here with you. Let's take it. Come on. Oh. Oh. Okay. Stick him in the handicap spot. Yeah, here. Yeah. Oh. Oh. What are you looking at? Nothing. You know if you run, they'll kill the rest of us. I'm not planning on running. We need to think of some sort of a plan.
What's going on here? I'm sorry. I called the FBI. Why? You heard what they said. Why? People are dying, Buford. It's not just about Izzy anymore. Buford Pennington, FBI. I'm Agent Rock Mathis, Dallas Field Office. This is Agent Alex Conway. But they said not to involve the FBI. They said they're watching us. I understand. We've already been briefed by your wife. My suggestion is we sweep the house, set up our base of operations here. Mr. Pennington, we can't waste any more time. They've already taken lives. Okay. Yes, it's bus 23 bound for Austin. I'm going to need the GPS tracking on that. What? Are you serious? No GPS on that bus? I need every one of those passengers questioned. I need intel and I needed it yesterday. I need to know how many hostages are still on the bus, how many kidnappers, what they look like, what direction the bus went. You know the drill. Now get it back to me ASAP. Conway. Yes, sir. They just found 12 bus passengers that were dropped off on a rural road about 30 miles from here. Okay, that bus does not have GPS tracking on it, but I can triangulate the signal when they call back. Also, I've traced the bank account to the Cayman Islands under Rex Miller. He's a local private investigator and he's also uh, owns a nightclub. Great work, Conway. Get the local PD out to his house and business. All known associates. Okay, I'm on it. Mr. Pennington. Some information has come to light, and I need to ask you a question. This is protocol. Why did you take out a life insurance policy on your daughter last week? That was just an investment. It's a type of self-banking that uses life insurance dividends as a revenue generator. You know how this looks. Do you have any connection to Rex Miller? I've never heard of him before. And yes, I know how this looks, but how was I supposed to know this was going to happen? I've been scraping together everything I can to send it to them to save her. And I assure you that I have nothing to do with this. I had to ask. This is what you're going to do. You're going to stall them. Are they expecting another deposit? Yes, but I've sent them everything that I have. I've got money tied up in properties, but it's going to take days to liquidate. Don't worry about that. The government has some assets we can utilize. When they call back, tell them you're going to give them the rest of their money, but it's going to take some time. Tell them you have to have it deposited in your account first, and it's going to take a couple hours. Rollin', 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 keep them doggies rollin', raw. Ah! It's 3.30. Time to give Daddy another call. I'll do it. It's them. Put them on speaker. Remember. Keep them on the line as long as possible. I'm here. What's the hold up, Daddy? I've got your money. Good. Send it and this will all be over. It's just going to take a couple of hours to get it sent to you. Let me talk to Izzy. No. You've got two hours or we kill her. Our patience is running out and so are the hostages. The penalty for being late again means another hostage dies. No, you don't have to kill anyone else. Please don't kill anyone else. I'm going to send you your money. Stay on the line. Hello? Look who's quick to pull the trigger. He was going to attack me. Did you hear that, Daddy? Another one bites the dust. Not many left until your daughter dies. You got two hours or she's dead. He went for my gun. Dead guys don't go for guns. If I didn't kill him, who did? He was in the laboratory the whole time. When you shot that lady in the hand, the bullet went through the wall and into his head. I knew I was a good shot. <laughs> I say she dies next. We're done voting. You know what? Today's your lucky day, Trace. I was actually coming for you, but guess what? This dead guy here provides you a little bit more time to live. You know what? I think you should come sit by him and show him your gratitude. I'm good, man, okay? Listen, I don't know. Ah! Ah! It wasn't a request. Come on! Ah! 
There you go. You know what? Let me make him a little bit more comfortable. A little hat here. Glasses. Can't forget the walking stick. Hey, Jerome. You'll tell me if he moves, right? Yeah. All right, well, we've got some more company best suited for you. Hey, do me a favor. Don't talk his ear off, okay? <laughs> Let's go, cowboy. They keep killing people. I've tried. It's not your fault. They would have killed a hostage no matter what you said. I got it. I was able to triangulate the signal to within a half mile radius. I don't see the bus, though. But over here, there's a house. This area's crop field. Over here, there's some type of barn structure. The barn. That's a big enough structure to hide the bus. They're in the barn. Contact SWAT. Give them the GPS coordinates of that clump of trees about a quarter of a mile north of the barn. Tell them to meet me there within the hour, but not to move till I get there. This has to be covert. Wait a second. I thought we were sending them the money. That's before we found out where they're at. This is a game changer. We have to go in there and take advantage of the opportunity. We'll breach the bus before the two hour deadline. But they'll kill her. They'll kill her if we don't. They've already killed people. We have to get in there before they kill somebody else. I've been in this situation before. You have to trust me. I'm on the move. We're going with you. If this is going down, we're gonna be there. Go. Sorry, sir, immediate family only. Keep me updated. What was all that shooting about? <laughs> Cowboy got startled. Shot a dead guy. You mean, you mean someone's dead? Who'd he shoot? Uh, the guy was already dead. I accidentally killed somebody when we first took the bus. You killed somebody by accident? I thought you were supposed to be a pro. I shot a lady in the hand to make a point. Turns out the bullet passed through hand into the lavatory where some guy was hiding. An accident. So if the guy was dead, why'd Carl shoot him again? They moved the corpse to the front of the bus. It was the new face, so I guess it started with the big guy. <laughs> Rex, it scared the dog water out of me. What are you, what are you doing? I'm devising our escape plan. Escape? You're crazy. They'll kill all of us. Yeah? Well, we're as good as dead if we just sit here. You heard him, I'm next. And like I said before, we can take him if we all work together. Why would we take that chance when we can just make a break for it, hmm? Escaping is our best option if we all want to get out of here. Besides, they say they know what's going on in this bus. They had no idea about the dead guy. His name's Charles. Charles, whatever. The point is, if we all make a run for it, we got the greatest probability of getting out of here alive. Besides, they're not even gonna be hunting for us. They're gonna be hunting for the girl back there. Who's with me? I'm not leaving my bus when there's passengers on it. Give me a break. There's no honor in going down with your bus, bro. I'm not your bro. Still gotta take a leak. Yeah, you do that. Ladies. Ladies. You're either with me or you're against me. I'm staying with Izzy. I wouldn't follow your lead if my life depended on it. Sweetheart, your life does depend on it. They're gonna kill us. Do you get that? If your daddy pays, they're not gonna leave us alive. They can't afford to have witnesses. They've already crossed the line. They've already killed people. They can't afford to have witnesses. We can't leave the bus. Here they come. Already? I thought I told you to stay in your seat. I know, I will. Did I, I not say we can hear and see everything that goes on inside this bus? Yes. Listen, I'll do what you say, okay? I'll sit next to the guy, I'll sit next to the dead guy. Just, I promise I'll be good, okay? Too late. Grab him. Come on, man, I promise I'll be good. I, guys. been a bad, bad boy. Come on, guys. I'll do anything. I'll do anything. I'll do anything. Please, quit your water Please. already. <laughs> I got it. I don't want this guy. Everybody dies. I 
I'm sorry. If I wasn't rebelling, I would have never been on this bus and none of this would have ever happened. It's not your fault. They were out to get you for your parents' money. It's either here and now or some other place and some other time. I don't care about my parents' money. All I care about now is this new life inside of me. You're not seriously thinking about keeping it. Izzy, you have to abort it. I would never do that. Don't I have a say in this? No, you don't. I can't believe you'd want to kill a life. Sorry to change the subject, ladies, but I have some information that might be a bit of a shock. Did you just call me a lady? Trace was right. The hijackers, they're not modern terrorists. How can you say that? They just removed Trace right before he was about to escape. They're monitoring us from the bus camera and they clearly have a hidden mic somewhere. They do. And I think I know exactly where it is. Where? Right here. Ain't that right, Elmo? What? You think I'm working with them? I'm not working with them. I'm, I'm here with Izzy. Grayson's not with them. Why would you say that? The dude said, let him know if Trace moved. If they were really watching us, he would have seen him move and he would have known about the late Charles. The only reason that they know about Trace's escape plan is because good old boy Grayson here went to the camp. He's not with them. Who else other than Elmo knows that you were on this trip today? Come on, Izzy. You can't seriously be considering this. You have no proof to back up your lame theory, dude. He's been texting them. I turned in my phone just like everybody else. But you didn't turn in your socks like everybody else. I went to the laboratory, I didn't find a phone. So I'm guessing the phone's in your socks. Whatever, man, whatever. I think you're suffering from some kind of hostage shock or something. Take off your socks and prove me wrong. I'm not taking off my socks. Take them off. I can't believe you're buying into this. I'm not taking, hey, get off me, phone. get off, get off me. Izzy, 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 I swear, I, I can explain. It's, it's not what you think. How could you do this? How could you do this to me? I trusted you, I loved you. They made me do it. Who's they? My Uncle Rex. He never located your mother. It was, it was all a scam. He, he wanted to get you on the bus because he knows how rich your dad is. Izzy, he said if I didn't help him, he said he would testify against me and make sure I went to prison for when I tried to boost one of his cars. He also said he'd press the DA to convict me of statutory rape since you're only 16. I, I didn't have a choice. He, he promised me no one would die. He, he said you wouldn't get hurt. Get away from me. Izzy, please. I said please. get away. The battery's about to die. Sheriff, Agent Mathis, Dallas Field Office, FBI. SWAT team commander? Yes, sir, right over there. These are the parents. If you could, take them to the shade, have somebody stay with them. Okay. You guys just hang Thank tight. You. Ron, it's been a while. Right, glad you're here. Wish it was better circumstances. What do we know so far? We don't have much intel. We don't know how many hostages, how many perps. This is Agent Mathis. Really? Patch him through. One of the hostages has called 911. Yes, this is Agent Mathis, FBI. Who am I speaking with? Jerome, the bus driver. Jerome, what can you tell us about the bus situation? How many hostages? Uh, there's four of us now, but there were seven earlier, and they killed others. How many perps? Hello? Hello? Hello, Jerome. I lost him, I think his phone died. Get on the horn with 911, find out that number. Yes, sir. What do you say? Said there are four hostages still on the bus. Nothing about the perps. How soon can you be ready? You say the word. It's past the deadline, we need to get in there. Tell me your plan. All right, here it is. The battery's plumb dead. What's going on? That was the FBI. I didn't get a chance to talk to him very long, but it's good to know that they're involved. Yes, it is. My life is over. 
going to jail for God knows how long. Serves you right. I want to die. If I had a gun, I'd end it. Grayson, nobody's perfect. We all make choices and do things that we regret, but it's never too late to do the right thing. There may be consequences to those choices, but you can grow from them and become a better person, a better man. You may not believe this, but God loves you so much, and He'll see you through this if you put your trust in Him. Why would God want anything to do with me? Are you serious? He gave His only Son for you, for everyone. One of my favorite verses. For God so loved the world, He gave His only Son, that whosoever believes in Him will not die, but have everlasting life. All you have to do is believe. I'm in. I've always wanted to believe, but I, I don't know. I've always felt like something was missing in my life. But I see you, Mary. I see your peace. I see God in you. I, I want what you got. How do I get God in me like you? Confess your sins and ask Jesus into your heart. It's that simple. All God wants is a relationship with you. After all, He created you. I don't even know if I know how to pray. Will you pray with me? Of course. I want in too. I don't want to be this guy anymore. Okay. Sorry, I, I still don't buy it. It's a keeper. Yeah, it's real pretty on you, Carl. Well, thank you. I'm like a Goodyear pimp. <laughs> Any money yet? Nope. They're 30 minutes past their deadline. It's them again. What do I say? Everybody quiet. You'll answer it. Stall them. Tell them you need more time. 30 more minutes. Hello? You're past the deadline and you know what that means. I know, I know, but the money's on the way. I just got off the phone with the bank. We've hit a glitch, but I promise, the money's coming. Please, just 30 more minutes, please. 30 minutes or your daughter dies. No more deadlines. They said if they don't have their money in 30 minutes, they're gonna kill her. They said no more deadlines. Mr. Pennington, it's gonna be all right. We only need 15. 30 more minutes. He's stalling. Something's not right. We waited this long. What's 30 more minutes? 30 more minutes could be life in prison. We need to get ready to go. What about the girl? What about the rest of them? I'll take care of them. You take care of what we should have done from the beginning. You sure? No witnesses. Why do they have to die? Nobody's supposed to die. Jake, he said nobody would die. You know why. It's part of life. Who's it going to be first? I guess it really doesn't matter. Don't worry. We really weren't friends anyways. And guide us through this safely. Amen. Thank you. No, thank God. Somebody's coming. Sorry. This looks like it's not gonna have a happy ending. Not even for you, nephew. I regret what I've done. But I regret even more that I'm related to a scumbag like you. Go ahead, shoot me. But it doesn't even matter. FBI's on their way. You're bluffing. You didn't call the FBI. You're right, I didn't. He did.
Those are gunshots. All right, guys, let's settle up. Move, move, move. Sorry, Princess. Grayson, hang in there. Help us on the way. Is it over? Yeah. You did good, son. Uh, real good. I don't think I'm gonna make it. Just hang in there. You took a bullet for me. You, you saved my life. It's a life worth saving. You're gonna be okay. Get one of them cool outfits. Turn around! Okay. Control, this is SWAT 1. We have the girl, she's secure. Roger that. Your daughter's safe. They're bringing her out. Thank God. <laughs> That's all that matters. What's the status on the house? House is secure. Hostages are alive and well. The hostages are alive? Yes, sir. They were locked up in a back room. I'll be. They were bluffing the whole time. On in three, two. We're coming to you live on location where the hijacking of a travel bus just came to a dramatic conclusion. Now, I had the chance to speak to some of the people who were on that bus, and they told me they were in fear for their lives. I'm glad everything worked out the way it did. We're going to bring you in a few days for some more questions. That's the lady that saved me. You're going to be okay, right? I'll be fine. I don't know how to thank you. No need to. Am I going to see you again? I sure hope so. We have one of the hostages here with us, Trace Newton. 
Mr. Newton, did you expect to survive this ordeal? No, I really didn't. But I wasn't afraid to die. I was willing to give my life for the others as the time came. Oh, that is mighty brave of you, sir. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Izzy, that'll about do it. I appreciate you guys coming in today to answer questions. Not a problem, ma'am. It's not uncommon for people who have went through traumatic experiences to need some help dealing with it. We have resources available that... I'll be fine. I found a higher source to help with that. Okay. Well, if you need anything, you let me know. I do have one question. The lady on the bus who saved my life, Mary Banks, I can't seem to find her anywhere. I called the hospitals and they said they don't know anything. I guess I just wanted to keep in contact. Well, you're not the only one having that problem. This is kind of hard to explain. Um, look, I'm really not supposed to do this, but I'm going to let you take a look at the bus surveillance video. There's no sound, but tell me what you see. Or in better words, tell me what you don't see. She's not there. Exactly. She's never there. She's never on the video. We see people talking to the air, but we never see Mary Banks. How could that be? That doesn't make any sense. No, that makes perfect sense. She was my guardian angel. Okay, honey, come on. Grayson and the baby are waiting. Let me just get my guitar. Isabella? Hi. Who are you? 